Hey yo guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're giving you guys our final review of Ategnatos by Eluveti. So after one entire week of listening to this album constantly, by yourself, what are your thoughts? My first thing I want to say is that this album did grow on me quite a lot. Okay. My first impression was pretty crappy for this album. I did not really like it. I was not feeling it at all, but that changed. Um, I'll start with a negative. I like to finish on a positive. Breathe is a crappy song to me. Don't like it. Might get some hate for that. I know a lot of you probably like that song, but it wasn't for me. That song was pretty much the only skippable song for me. I just kind of got bored of it. I felt it was a little bit annoying would skip it quite often. Um, the next kind of negative I have is that a lot of the songs kind of just were meh songs. Not bad, not great, but just nothing special about them. In this grouping, I would include songs like Death Walker, Blackwater Dawn, um, A Cry in the Wilderness, um, Threefold Death, uh, there's a few of them. I won't name them all, but they kind of all just don't have enough personality for them to stand out to me. On the flip side of that, um, songs like Mine is the Fury, which was my best song in my first, first impression, still an awesome song, love that song. Um, Warship is also a really, really cool song. It's, those are the two hardest songs in the album and they, they slam, they, they go hard. But to my own surprise, the song that grew on me the most was Ambi Ramos. Ambi Ramos is an awesome song and it's just so catchy. I love the flute licks during the, during the chorus, awesome. I love the, uh, the vocal back and forth that they do during the chorus where the female um, Anna Murphy sings in a uh, clean vocal and then the male singer sings in a harsh vocal, but he sings in like, uh, I think he's singing in Gaelic or something. It's definitely another language. Um, but just the, the offset and the balance of that is really cool. Uh, there's this one note she hits too, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's in the second verse. She hits this, this really nice note you know, in the middle of the verse. I really like that, it just stands out to me like, wow, that was cool. Overall, this really cool song, man. It's growing me a lot. I, I, I found myself cranking it up. Like, it's definitely a lot more pumping than I remembered it originally when we first did our reaction video to it. I kind of remembered it as like a ballad almost. I don't know why I thought that. But, I mean, overall, the album the album grew on me quite a lot over the week. All right, well, I can say the similar thing for myself as my first impression was that this album was kind of okay. I didn't really dislike it as much as you did, but I didn't really love it. But after listening to it, I was starting to enjoy it, but I wasn't really in love with it. That being said, I find it funny that you mentioned Breathe and Amiramas because I have um, some personal notes about those songs too over the week. Now Breathe, I don't dislike the song. Not as much as you, it wasn't really that skippable for me, but what it felt to me is that that song would have been a perfect album closer. It's the third last track, Rebirth is afterward, and then Eclipse, which is, you know, just three minutes of outro. What I think the most effective thing that could be done here is that completely remove Eclipse, make Breathe the last song right after Rebirth, especially because Rebirth is really hard. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think, a really good way to kind of just, you know, have something a lot more lighter hearted to conclude it. Because when you hear Breathe and then you hear Rebirth afterwards, it feels like you're going to go back up again in terms of ramping up the energy, but then it doesn't. It just kind of ends with Eclipse. Mm -hmm. um, one an issue I had with Eclipse is just the fact that there were so many interludes in this album and so many intros to songs that the weight of Eclipse was really not there. Like, I, I, honestly, I would skip it when I could. There would be times where I would just put the album on and then when it started playing, I'm like, wait, what is this one? Oh, this is the three minute long nothing, so I just skipped it. I liked Eclipse. I thought it, I thought it had a nice impact on the album, but my issue with it is that it was a little bit too long. I felt like there was a certain, a couple certain points of the song where I feel like it could have ended there and been a lot better, but it feels like it drags a little bit for me. Yeah, but even then, 
keeping it at its original length would have worked if there were no multiple interludes or songs that had like a yeah. minute of startup. Yeah, it would have had more impact. But this is that's something that this band does though. They're kind of known for that. A lot of bands are. Yeah, I did kind of find though a lot of the songs felt very conclusive, especially in the second half of the album. There would be some songs I'd think, oh, this has got to be the end of the album now with the way it sounds, and then it just keeps going. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, because you could consider that, you know, it sounds great that it kind of keeps giving you more and more, but it's also constantly tricking you, like, is it over yet? What's going on? Mm. So, I I don't know if I'm a huge fan of that, because it's constantly tricking me that way, Yeah. but you could see it as a bit of a positive. Um, also, the contour of the album I found was interesting, because in my first impression, I really didn't like the second half as much as the first half, felt like everything's blending in, everything's, I, I kind of got staled out, a little bit burned out by the album. Then it flipped, didn't it? it? To an extent, the second half is a lot heavier than the first half, for one. And I felt that the energy contour started at a certain level, mm -hmm. dipped a little bit, and then just started just going up and up and up. Which yeah. is something you don't usually see. You see a little bit more of a kind of roller coaster esque contour yeah. among albums, so that's kind of unique that this album has, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Ambi Ramas, awesome song. Yep. On the first impression, I think I thought it was good, but not amazing. But the more I would hear it, I would really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And you know, one tiny funny thing about that song I noticed, you can actually hear the flute player breathe yep. in the first second of the song before it starts. <laughs> Just a small thing I noticed listening to it one day, where I'm like, oh, oh, that's funny. Nice. But that flute lick is really good. That song overall is so catchy, as you mentioned. Yeah. Like, I noticed that too. Especially it was, the chorus is like, just a perfect book. Yeah, and it's just, it's the kind of catchy that you enjoy. And that catchiness is really dangerous because if it's catchy and you don't like it, you're gonna hate it because it's stuck in your head and you're not enjoying it. Right. But when you do enjoy it, it feels great because it's in your head and you just love it every time it keeps replaying. Yeah, but did you catch what they do at the end of the song? Key change. Well, <laughs> look, I, I don't dislike key changes, okay? I, I just find I sometimes know. They get a little obvious, or just like, did this really have to happen? The key change yeah. in that song, I didn't mind. Yeah, I felt it's not, it doesn't seem like it's forced in there. Exactly. It felt necessary. It felt natural. When it's done right and natural, it's okay. Exactly. So, Atignados, the title track, the first track, that's also another track that grew on me a bit. Um, we, did, uh, we didn't do a reaction, I don't think, but we listened to the video, we listened to the song um, before it came on. I was like, eh, this is all right, whatever. But then at the more I listened to the album, I was like, wow, this is actually a really strong intro track. Like this gets the album going. It sets the tone for this album really, really nicely. That it does. Um, and then you got a few pretty strong songs after that that are just kind of just holding, holding the level. They're not really doing much. But then like you said, around, like after the silver, the, the, the silver and glow, that which is an interlude track. Yeah. You get Ambi Ramos as track eight, and then after that you get a few fighter songs. Exactly. And then the album just kind of closes off with much more of a bang. Which I kind of like that more. I'd rather an album start off slow and finish hard than start off hard and finish slow. Yeah. Like, I want it to get better as it goes, not get worse as it goes. Yeah, that's that's a really especially with an album as long as this one being one hour long, you really don't want it to tail off and go down. So the contour they had definitely helped that. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, what do you, do you want to talk about any of the songs? Or do you want to get to ratings? I'm pretty much ready to rate if you um, are. There's not much else for me to say about specific songs, so let's get down to business. What would you rate the album? Well, with everything said and done, uh, I will say that this album is a well-made album. Uh, the vocals sound great. There's some great guitar work on it. Um, there's some decent percussion stuff on there. Um, all the extra instruments, the bagpipes, the flutes, the harps, the... Etc. All everything you hear on there, there's quite a bit. Um, all sounds very nice. It's all well placed and you know very nice. Um, and yeah, this album grew on me a lot, man. So I, I, there's just there's not enough there though for me to say it's a toe tag. I'm just gonna get that all right now. Um, it just doesn't have that spark. It just doesn't have that that oomph to it. But it's still a really solid album, so I'm gonna give it a seven. All right, a seven. Um, for me, this album definitely grew. Like, I think it's, you know, clear it grew a lot on both of us. I would kind of go a little bit back and forth throughout the week, though, it's curious if I enjoy it or not. Because the first half of the week, I wasn't sure. I'm kind of getting, was still getting burned out of it. So, 
It took about halfway through the week for me to really start appreciating it. Mm -hmm. And this is a well-made album. I will give it that. I just fear that a lot of the songs still kind of blend in together sometimes. And I'll put the album on and not know, I don't know, what, what, what song is this one? Oh, it's that one. Mm -hmm. For me, I get the 6.5 because it's still good. It's a good album. I don't feel it's good enough for a 7, which is truly solid, but not at the toe tag level. So it's a 6.5 for me. Fair enough, 6.5 from Fish, 7.0 from Vile Self. But that's it for this video, guys. So be sure to leave your comments below and let us know what you guys think. If you guys agree with us or don't agree with us, let us know, click like on the like button, thumb thing. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm Vile Self. I'm TV Fish. And we'll see you guys very soon on the next one. Later.